Test, test, test. Okay, can everybody hear me? If you can hear me, uh, say yes in the chat box over here. Okay, Linda, Jack, Mary, okay. Okay, very good. I want to welcome you all to this session. Remember, we have sessions most every Thursday night, and you're welcome to all of them. So basically, pay attention to your your emails to know where to go. And I'm Dr. Bonebreak. I'm going to see if we can help you to uh, gain some knowledge on things perhaps that you didn't know before. So. Let's kind of get right to it here. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, surprising things you need to know about vitamin A. First off, uh, let's talk a little bit about the third, third, and a third rule. Basically, imagine three boxes. This third is a deficiency, this third is adequate, and this third is excess. Now, just kind of picture any anything uh, they use for any type of supplements and it doesn't matter whether it's uh, vitamins or minerals or enzymes doesn't matter about any of those Usually we're taught to uh, give something for a given symptom or ba based on a given blood test or whatever so if you're in deficiency and you take that substance and it goes into an adequate range you feel better if you start at the low end of the adequate range, and you go to the high end, after you're given a substance, you feel no change at all. When you're in the high end of adequate, and it shoves you into excess, then you feel worse. And it's not worse just in a detoxification sense, 
to get worse and you stay worse. Okay. And that's the first thing when I talk any type of supplement or herb or vitamin, enzyme, whatever, with any patient that I share with them. Okay. So let's see a yes if you understand that. I want this interactive on the chat box. Good, good, good. Okay. Okay, primary considerations. For a given patient who has a sufficient nutrient intake, is this a certain susceptible person, usually by age, genotype, or in induced weaknesses? With regard to certain nutrients, what may be interfering with proper absorption or metabolism in this individual? With regard to normal chemical degradation, secretion, and excretion, what may be interfering with proper metabolism in this individual? So, this person already has sufficient nutrient intake, so something is still off. So, what's causing that? Deficiencies. Primary objective should be to surmise the cause or causes. Secondarily, Correct with dietary poison, aversion, or other measures. Thirdly, or tertiary, supplement to optimize with as little intervention as possible. Feedback systems. The body works on a negative feedback system such that when something becomes overabundant, production of a precursor is lessened or halted. So basically, if, if you have an adequate amount down here and it goes into excess, then the negative feedback goes, tells the precursor, okay, slow down or halt the production. If it's in deficiency, then the negative feedback says, let's speed it up. Let's start up again. Okay, now all these are transient. It's in constant flux. A positive feedback system is like cancer. When something is produced, then more is produced without inhibitory systems interfering and stopping it. So I, I call this the American syndrome. Of a little is good, more is better. And that's something that we need to all get away from in America. Fat soluble vitamins, which vitamin A is, all of them depend on bile for optimal absorption. Okay? So, vitamin A, A1 or retinol, and A2, dehydroretinol, have about the same physiologic activity qualitatively, but A1 promotes the growth of rats more actively. Retinol can be manufactured from carotenes, except in diabetes. Beta-carotene is the most effective provitamin yielding two molecules. The others form only one molecule of vitamin A. The conversion occurs primarily in the intestinal wall and to some extent in the liver. So, uh, how many of you knew that you had to take straight vitamin A in diabetes because the body cannot convert the beta carotene. Let's see a yes or a no in, in the box here. Yes or no in the chat box. Did you know that the, in the body in diabetes needs straight vitamin A? Okay, good, we're learning something. Now the conversion occurs into the, in the intestinal wall, so basically if you have some type of intestinal condition, IBS, or some, something like that, then you are immediately in jeopardy uh, with the beta carotene. Did you know that? Let's see a yes or a no in the chat box.
Did you know that beta carotene is mainly transformed in the intestinal wall? Okay, one person, yes. Most everybody else, no. So basically, we're going to do a later class on the intestinal wall and how to converge it um, very quickly. I'm talking 10 to 12 days have a whole new intestine. So we're going to do something on that in the future. To some extent in the liver, carotene is not absorbed as easily as retinol and a considerable amount is lost in the feces. Bile salts and fat are required in the intestine for carotene absorption. Okay, so basically you got to always wonder with any fat soluble vitamin, including vitamin A, do you have enough bile salts and fat? Now we went over the bile salts last week when we talked about vitamin C. Cholesterol is converted into bile acids and bile salts with properly metabolized vitamin C. And we went over, if you missed that, uh, go for the replay on YouTube so you can see that because there's, you know, that gets kind of complicated, more than we can go into uh, in this session. So go back and look at it. And you need fat. So if you have somebody on a very low or zero fat diet, then that's going to cause a problem with uh, the bile salts and with any of the fat soluble vitamins, include vitamin A. They're required in the intestine for carotene absorption. When the liver oil is ingested, retinol esters are hydrolyzed by pancreatic esterases. So the pancreas gets involved in this as well. We're going to have a whole session on how the pancreas functions in the future. The vitamin rapidly uh, absorbs into the intestinal mucosa. The esters cannot be absorbed unhydrolyzed such as in diarrhea. So if you got somebody with ongoing diarrhea, they're going to have trouble with vitamin A. Matter of fact, they're going to have trouble with all the fat-soluble vitamins, which we went over somewhat last week in vitamin C. Bile is not necessary for the absorption of straight vitamin A, although it is helpful. So it really helps with that. But regardless, if you got a problem with the intestinal wall, and you're not taking enough fat, then you're still going to have a problem. In cases where there's stoppage of bile, bile salts or desiccated bile, like ox bile, for example, should be administered to make sure the provitamin is taken up. The vitamin is recombined with fatty acids immediately after passage through the gut wall. So if you're low in fatty acids, then that's problematic. Then the vitamin esters are conveyed by the portal vein to the liver where they're stored in ester form. Vitamin A is then redistributed to the various organs via the bloodstream in the form of a protein complex. In other words, your body chelates it. Chelation is a, the combination of any vitamin or mineral or whatever with a protein or amino acid. Okay. Toxicity, especially in children, are like this. Loss of appetite, weight loss, irritability, fissuring at the corners of the mouth. Wait a minute, I thought that was only B2 deficiency that caused fissuring at the corners of the mouth. No. Vitamin A, uh, over taking too much vitamin A also causes fissuring at the corners of the mouth. Deficiency of iron. Just state of dehydration also causes that. Cracking and bleeding of the lips. So uh, a lot of people get into that in the winter. And so you should be looking at, uh, you know, what's going on with the vitamin A. Now, loss of hair, liver enlargement, okay? Let's talk about those. Now, I'm, I'm going to talk about the loss of hair in a minute, but how many of you have patients that have enlarged livers, they come in with that diagnosis and you even see it on uh, x-rays or imaging. Let's see a yes or a no in the chat box there. Enlarged liver. Okay. 
Linda does not have anybody with an large liver. Nobody does. Well, I see quite a few people with it. I see all sorts of things. That's why I'm including this in here. And you may find your amazement when you start really looking at it. Okay, Diane does have a patient with this. Okay, we're talking. We're going to talk about overdoses here. Bone and joint pains. How many of your patients have joint pains that you're having trouble getting rid of? Let's see a yes or a no in the chat box. Joint pains. Yes. Diane's on there. No. Mario. Must not be a chiropractor. Mark Bennett. Lori Simonides. David Donaldson. Yeah. Okay. So I want you to pay real close attention. And good. You know, most everybody does here. Prior to uh, a seminar I gave in New England, two female doctors called, and I want you to really listen to this, okay? One said, your flyer states you can help with hair loss, correct? I said, yes, we address that in several ways, which when we get into some B vitamins, we're going to be talking about that also. After seeing in the seminar what I just talked about, about vitamin A toxicity causing hair loss. She discontinued, she was only taking a single capsule a day, okay? And she called me three weeks later. She discontinued it. She got real excited saying, my hair was falling out in clumps almost daily, getting really thin. But a week after discontinuing one capsule a day, it stopped falling out and is coming in thickly now. How many of you know that just taking one capsule of vitamin A can cause your hair to fall out in clumps? It can cause you to go too toxic. Let's look in the chat box there. No. Linda Thompson says no. Dana, no. Lori, David, no. Did not know that. It's good. You know, we're learning stuff here. Jack, no. This is what I want you to, you know, really start realizing in, in these uh, talks that we're given now. The second one was breastfeeding her child. She called in, says, can you do something with my child? I said, probably. Now, her child was experiencing colic, but normal things were not working for this malady. After hearing the overdose reactions, she discontinued the one capsule per day that she was taking. She called me a few days later. It's like, you know, three or four days after the seminar, she stopped taking the vitamin A immediately. The colic stopped. Okay. How many of you knew that just taking a single capsule of vitamin A could cause a breastfeeding woman to cause colic in her child. No, 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 no. And see, these, these are things. Now, normally you take a colicky child, you put it by the window, let it get sunshine, maybe 15 minutes a day, and that helps it. Well, she had already tried all that, okay? So she took this seminar and realized, looking at these toxicity levels, this sort of thing right here. And she said, oh my gosh, I wonder if that could be doing it. And it was. Just a single capsule was throwing both of these women into overdose. One caused a lot of problem with the suckling child. This is why I say at the start of this part four seminar, I take people off far more things than I put them on for reasons like this. Because I see stuff like this happening all the time Luckily, I've studied this enough that I see it right away and they're going, now, wait a minute. You know, how can that be? So let's take a look at some more things. Learn what vitamins, supplements, and their metabolism actually do, and you'll be amazed at how quickly patients respond. Now, look at this. One of them, the child, was colicky for months. Didn't know what to do. The MDs didn't know what to do. Nobody knew what to do. The other one, hair was coming out in clumps. She was trying all sorts of stuff. And all they had to do was stop taking one capsule 
of vitamin A that's all they were taking that was throwing them into overdose and making them toxic, okay? And it's very, very quickly that stuff like this happens. So in the part four that I teach, by the way, I'm teaching one this weekend in San Antonio and then Lubbock the weekend after that. Um, we show you how to get really, really quick turnaround in very serious conditions because you're going to really learn how the body chemistry works, okay? Deficiency affects growth of the young, as do lack of any vitamins, other essential factors. Night blindness, this is basically most all that we were taught about vitamin A, other than, hey, if you eat a, a, a polar bear liver, you're going to overdose and die. You know, that's about all I knew about it before I really started looking at it, okay? This is termed the antibiotic or anti-infective vitamin, although it doesn't do it directly. The specific influence this vitamin has is on epithelial structures. Okay. Now let's have in the chat box here, what structures in the body have epithelial structures? Let's see a discussion in the chat box. What structures in the body have epithelial structures? All organs. Diane, you're right. The very first person is right. Skin, eyes, Dr. Jennings, lung tissue, Mario, that's correct. Skin, yes. It's very good. And most have it both on the inside and the outside. Okay. So most all organs have epithelial tissue both on the inside and the outside. So it's going to affect secretory and excretory functions of organs because that all happens at the epithelia. Therefore, vitamin A can affect basically all organ functions. Sinus, intestine, David Donaldson, that's correct. Another thing about vitamin A deficiency is it can cause photophobia. Photophobia is avoidance of light. So something you'll notice in deficiency is people wearing sunglasses all the time because of light sensitivity. How many of you knew that about vitamin A deficiency? Basically, the things that we knew about is it uh, caused night blindness. A couple knew that. Okay, David Donaldson didn't. Okay, several did know that already. Well, that's good. Okay. So immediately when you see somebody walking around and they have to wear shades all the time, immediately think, you got a vitamin A deficiency. Now, I'm not talking necessarily about a frank deficiency. Matter of fact, most of the time I'm not, and you're going to see why. Usually it ends up being a problem with the proper metabolism of vitamin A. So you got to learn the difference between a frank deficiency of vitamin minerals and a problem uh, with metabolism. So a frank deficiency basically is you're not putting it in your mouth. Okay. Metabolism issue is it's going in but something is blocking the digestion the absorption, the transfer through the blood, the absorption through the cells, the absorption through the nuclear and mitochondrial membranes. So you have to look at every one of those things, and we're going to be covering those at some time in the future also. Xerophthalmia is keratinization of cells of the lacrimal glands which then stops secreting tears. The external surfaces become dry or dry eyes. How many of you knew that a deficiency, either relative or absolute deficiency of vitamin A, caused dry eyes? Let's see your yes or no in that chat box. No, from Jack. No, from Mark Bennett. No, from Dr. Jennings. No, from Patok, or yes, from Patok. Lori Simonized, Patok, you're ahead of the game. Dana, yes, 
That's good if you, you knew that. So basically, we're taught when somebody have dry eyes, hey, go and get some eye drops, right? Which is okay. Just to get them through that phase, but now you got to look at that vitamin A metabolism issue, or frank deficiency issue. The external surfaces become dry and have a dull appearance. Ulcers form, bacteria aren't washed away, and the eyelids swell and become sticky and scaly. Frequently, there are bloody exudates and severe eye infections. Okay, so the stuff that people are putting on, you know, for the poofy eyes below the eye, one of the biggest causes of that is vitamin A deficiency or metabolism. Sticky and scaly, people wake up with sleep in their eyes, say, can you do anything about this sleep in my eyes? Same thing, bloody exudate exudates, severe eye infections. How many of you knew all of these things? Let's see that in the chat box. No, 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 none of you did. Ah, one did, okay. Mario did, very good. Diane knew some of them, okay. Okay, so we're learning stuff. Now, of course, all this is available if you want copies of this. Uh, you know, all you got to do is ask after the seminar, and I think it has a key where you request it, and that's fine, or you can just email me, and that's fine. I'll give my email a little bit. If not treated in time, blindness results. Did you know that actual blindness could result, not just night blindness, but frank blindness? can result from a vitamin A metabolism issue. Let's see that in the chat box. Yes, David Donaldson. No, Mark Bennett. No, Linda Thompson. No, Diane. Lori, okay. Yeah, most did not know that. Yeah. Now look at this. Patok, yes, very good. But in most instances, death occurs because of respiratory infections. Before this occurs, because of keratinizing epithelium. For the normal epithelium in various parts of the respiratory tract, alimentary tract, the gut, and eyes, and paraocular glands, and the genitourinary tract. So, basically we have people dying, let's say, of COVID and uh, the flu, which people basically die of kidney failure and respiratory failure, okay? And But you can make sure that the vitamin A metabolism is on and they are very much protected even from those things. We're going to talk about genetics here in a little bit too. One of the results of this characterization is loss of cilia in the respiratory epithelium. These ordinarily tend to sweep upward bacteria-laden foreign particles and thus combat infection. Those are some of the ways that uh, it's antibacterial, okay? So how many of you knew that you have failure of the respiratory tract, gastrointestinal issues, genitourinary tract, because your vitamin A metabolism is off? Let's see that. Dr. Donaldson, no. Dana, no. Mark Bennett, no. Lori, no. Pat Talk, no. Diane, yes. Okay. Okay, so, you know, when you start seeing this and you have these difficult cases, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm going to this vitamin A, you know, for this particular session, because people really are not aware of this. And it really all goes back to epithelial performance, okay? Because all these are from pr primarily from epithelial malfunction. Vitamin A is necessary for reproduction and lactation. Now, this is why this female was taking the vitamin A, because she said, oh, this is going to help with the lactation, and I don't want to have a problem with lactation, okay? But she had no idea that this was going to cause a problem with her child because she was already adequate, okay? Just as essential as vitamin E as is normal taste acuity. 
Both the intensity and the quality of taste are affected because of distinct histologic changes in the taste buds and the surrounding tissue. Okay, how many of you knew the reproduction, lactation, taste acuity depended on vitamin A metabolism? Let's see that in the chat box. No from Pat Talk. No, 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 no. Okay, good. We're learning stuff. And remember, all this relates to epithelial function. Every bit of this. Okay. Because reproduction, lactation, that's secretory and excretory. Okay. Normal taste acuity, those are epithelial tissues. Okay. Skin conditions frequently result from a deficiency, such as dryness and scaliness of the skin in early stages. Sometimes small pustules, follicular hyperkeratosis, appear around hair follicles uh, or extensor extens extens surfaces the upper and lower extremities on the shoulders, neck, back, lower abdomen, and buttocks. They're hard and pigmented, surrounded by a zone of pigmentation. Sometimes pimples resemble acne, except there are seldom many pus. Okay, how many of you knew that just the dryness of the skin, for example, and most skin conditions are because of an abnormal metabolism of vitamin A. All of us have people, okay, we got a couple of yes on that, uh, that have dry elbows, dry heels, for example, dry feet, dry toes. Okay, this is where you start applying this stuff. How many of you knew that having all these pustules on the back, this, this occurs a lot in pubescent children, especially males. How many of you knew that those were caused by abnormal vitamin A metabolism? Let's see that in the chat box. No, David Donaldson, no, Mark Bennett, no. Pat Doc, yes. Dr. Simonides, no. Okay, so you have these pubescent children coming in. Now you can start saying with some conviction, hey, you know, I think I know some things that could help. And one of these times we're also going to have uh, one of these talks on just skin conditions also. Okay. Another finding is urinary calculi. Wow. Okay, I, I thought that was for a variety of other reasons, but vitamin A metabolism? How you knew that stones, urinary stones, could be there from abnormal vitamin A metabolism? Let's see that in the chat box. No, 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 no. Yeah, we were taught that is basically all magnesium malmetabolism. Yeah, urinary calculi. It's necessary in tooth formation because the enamel layer is an epidural structure. Paralysis and nerve degeneration because deficiency may retard bone growth, particularly in chondral bone, while the CNS and other soft tissues continue to grow at a nearly normal rate, which can have an effect on the nervous system, even crowding the brain and entirely mechanical in origin. So canal stenosis can be there because of vitamin A metabolism being abnormal. How many of you knew that? See that in the chat box. No from Pat Talk. No Mark Bennett. No Dr. Simonides. No Carrie. No Dr. Donaldson. No Diane. Okay, good. We're learning some stuff here. Atrophy of the testes. Wait a minute, I thought that was only from taking steroids. Andro androgenic hormones. I mean, you knew that atrophy of the testes in an adult can occur. And basically being infertile because of a problem with vitamin A metabolism. Dr. Donaldson, uh-oh, no, 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 no. We're going to talk about reproduction in a future class also. Okay, 
Looks like about everybody is out of that, okay? Nobody was aware of that. A general function is maintenance of epithelial tissues. So we're getting an idea of all the things that epithelial tissues do around the body in a normal condition by perhaps playing a role in the differentiation of epithelial cells into specialized cells and tissues, such as stem cells. So every one of us have had people come in that are getting stem cell injections. And a lot of times it doesn't work at all. When it does work, works maybe three to six months and doesn't work anymore. And it reverts back. And, you know, the problem is I've questioned every one of my patients who have come in and they've gotten that. I said, did they tell you that for the stem cell to differentiate you had to have proper vitamin A metabolism. I've never seen a yes yet on that. Okay. How many of you knew that for stem cells to differentiate into the tissue that they should, that you needed proper vitamin A metabolism? No. 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 Now, let's just, you know, take a... Uh, Look at that. All of us have stem cells. So why are they not differentiating? Okay. A big part of it is, is the vitamin A metabolism. Okay. And we start getting people with this. And, you know, we've had several x-rays over uh, several decades in both extremity and cartilaginous joints. Uh, where the joints rebuild, the cartilage rebuilds and everything. Wow, how about that? Okay, the joint rebuilds because of several things we do, but a big part is this. For this reason, recent work suggests that retinol may in some way exert potential pr protection from carcinogens or mutagenic agents, particularly in early pre-neoplastic stages. Okay, so vitamin A protects from cancer differentiating. Since tumorigenesis generally involves a loss of differentiation, such a possibility appears plausible. There's evidence that a number of carcinogens are much more potent in animals that have had long-term deficiency of vitamin A. So, how many of you knew that cancer itself Part of that cause is right here because of vitamin A metabolism being off. How many of you knew that? No, no, yes. Okay, Jack knew that, or Mark Bennett knew that. Good, you're ahead of the game on that. Vision. Light sensitive rods and cones require vitamin A for their formation and proper functioning. So, color and black and white cells. Okay, their outer segments are surrounded by pigment epithelial cells that store vitamin A. The pigment contained in the outer segments of the rods, visual purple and rhodopsin, is a conjugated protein consisting of a protein opsin linked to prosthetic group. The red colored aldehyde called NeoB retinine and L cis retinol. Rhodopsin is extractable from the rods by mild detergents, bile salts, or digitonin, with which it forms a soluble complex. Okay, so isn't this interesting? Not only do you need vitamin A for um, don't, not only do you need bile for proper absorption of vitamin A, but you also need it as a mild detergent at the cellular level. So you got to have proper bile at the cellular level. And we talked about that with uh, vitamin C uh, and how the body uh, reabsorbs 5% of the bile so it can help with cellular absorption. Basically what it does, if you go back and you look at that from uh, what we did last week, it takes away the uh, water tension it makes water wetter, uh, and there are several things that happen right at the cellular level, but you have to have the bile to break down the water tension 
in order for anything to work, and in this case, vitamin A. How many of you knew that bile worked at the cellular level to break down water tension and that if you didn't have it, you have problems with the absorption of oxygen and nutrients and excretion of waste? No, no, no. It's just the same as in the lungs. When you have a blue baby, they give surfactants because you have water tension that's there in the lungs of the blue baby and it's not allowing absorption of oxygen. So they squeeze that deter uh, uh, the surfactants into the lungs so they can breathe it. Well, same thing happens at the level of every single cell in the body. Okay? Every single cell in the body. And again, if you didn't see last week's, you should uh, go back and look at it. It's on YouTube. Okay? And if you want to request the notes, you can still do that. Bone density. A large study concluded that a high intake of vitamin A was associated with loss of bone density, but only with a low intake of vitamin D. How many of you knew that vitamin A and vitamin D work together for bone density? Vitamin D, of course, just absorbed from the calcium, but vitamin A, yeah, okay, Mark Bennett did. That's good. Yeah, vitamin A is required for bone density. It really is not so much uh, estrogen. Very little in that way. Progesterone and vitamin A are basically the things that are required for bone density. We have a few that knew that. That's good. Pat Talk and Mark Bennett. Okay. Joint surfaces. Because vitamin A is necessary in the maintenance of epithelial tissues, joint surfaces need it to be formed and maintained. Joint lubrication. Because vitamin A maintains epithelial tissues, those that exude joint lubrication need it. Therefore, production of hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, and glucosamine sulfate rely on proper metabolism of vitamin A. In other words, your body makes those things because vitamin A is being used properly. How many of you knew that? The very lubrication of the joints. Hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, glucosamine sulfate production rely on proper vitamin A metabolism. Mark Bennett, no. Lori Simonides, no. Pat Talk, no. Mary Jennings, yes. Good. Some of you knew that. Uh, a lot of you didn't. Mucopolysaccharides that are ex exuded by cell surfaces for protection depend on proper vitamin A metabolism, such as those that protect the surfaces of the stomach and the intestines. How many of you knew that the gut lining, such as the stomach and the small and large intestine, the mucus that protects those from the digestive juices rely on vitamin A metabolism. Okay, Patok, yes. Donaldson, no. Bennett, no. Or, okay. Retinol appears to be involved with mucopolysaccharide bias biosynthesis at an enzyme level by in, in, increasing the incorporation of these into chondroitin sulfate. So just we were talking about, and of course, glucosamine sulfate is a smaller part of chondroitin sulfate. The effect may involve sulfate formation or activation, which explains the damage to mucus secreting epithelial tissues manifested as their ophthalmia and dryness Characterization of the skin, epithelium, gastrointestinal, and genitourinary systems. So basically, the mucopolysaccharides are the big things that you know are causing the problem with those particular organs, or a lack thereof. Nucleic acids. Retinol may have some relation to nucleic acid metabolism since there is a decrease in the DNA content of several organs during vitamin A deficiency, remedied by administration of it. So, nucleic acid metabolism. How many of you knew that proper vitamin A metabolism was necessary for 
Nucleic acid metabolism. Mark Bennett, no. David Donaldson, no. Dana, no. Simonides, no. So basically for our genetic expression to be proper, we have to have the proper vitamin A metabolism. Electron transport. Retinol may be also be involved in electron transport systems, therefore affecting energy levels. How many knew? How many of you knew that vitamin A is necessary for electron transport systems and therefore energy levels at the cellular level? How many of you knew that? Mark Bennett, yes. Patok, no. Donaldson, no. Mario, no. Dana, no. Dr. Jennings, no. Milk. Both carotene and vitamin A are secreted by the mam mammary gland, and human colostrum has two to three times more than does human milk. With human milk having five to ten times vitamin A activity of cow's milk. Okay. Nutrient interactions. Vitamin E has a sparing action on vitamin A. So vitamin A depends on vitamin E metabolism. Vitamin A and carotene are more effective in curing their deficiency symptoms if E is administered at the same time. Ingestions of alpha-tocopherol increases the storage of vitamin A in the liver and prevents the oxidation of A. That's probably because vitamin E uh, basically rules over the flexibility of the cell wall, allowing vitamin A into the cell. Okay. Antioxidant properties of vitamin E are enhanced by, for example, phenols and ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Good sources of A1. Now, somebody uh, has their mic on. We're hearing some background noise, so if you would, turn your mic off. I'd appreciate it. Good sources. A1 predominates in cod liver oil and other saltwater fish. A2, freshwater fish, fish roe, flesh of oily fish, livers, and other animals. Butter, eggs, and cheese. The provitamin or carotenes occur most abundantly in carrots and other yellow vegetables. For example, squash, sweet potatoes, many green vegetables, particular, particularly broccoli, spinach, and beet greens. Now, do you seriously think, looking at this, anybody has a deficiency of intake? Let's see a yes or a no in there. I don't know, frankly, anybody, unless they're on pure junk food, that has a poor intake of vitamin A. No, no, no. Okay, therefore, it must be the metabolism of vitamin A that's the real issue. So, let's start reframing. Uh, thinking whether it's a, a frank deficiency of intake of vitamin A and looking at whether it's actually the metabolism of vitamin A that's the real issue. Okay. Mark Bennett, no, but wow. Okay, vitamins A, C, and E must be taken in a balance, as we learned last week. We kind of went over that. For C to be metabolized properly, the acid-alkaline balance must be proper. And I'm going to ask you, if you didn't see last week, uh, you should go back and look at it and maybe request the notes of it. I always start with anybody with acid-alkaline balance. That's where everything in health should start, right there. I'm not against taking supplements, but look at, before you start giving things, uh, especially in any type of high amounts, but sometimes just small amounts like one capsule like we talked about before, let's, let's start looking more about, okay, if we give them, especially like vitamin A, are we going to make them toxic? 
So therefore, we got to look at the metabolism. So we start with the acid alkaline balance. It must be taken with polyphenols from plants. So therefore, if you have somebody on an extended ketone diet, that is going to cause a problem with vitamin C metabolism. Okay? It must be taken with bioflavonoids. And it must be taken with copper. As we learned with vitamin C here, bioflavonoids are in green leafy vegetables, pulp and peel, uh, of fruits and vegetables, and copper is basically in the seeds of fresh fruits and vegetables. So basically have your patients start taking and eating the seeds and the peels. And you're you're going to cause an upset in things when you just have them drink the juice. Now, it sounds all great and all that. We're going to discuss juices in depth at another one and the problems that they cause. But you got to have the pulp, peel, and the seeds. And you'll start seeing when you start really getting this, you're going to see amazing changes super quick in all of your patients' health. Vitamin C protects vitamin E. So E protects A and C protects E. See, all these have to interact like this. So you have these certain things in the vitamin C complex. Now, what about the vitamin E? Somebody just sighed. Whoever that was, please turn your mic off. Vitamin K must be present. Selenium must be present. You get, again, the selenium is from the seeds. Vitamin K is in the gut. The gut biome produces the vitamin K. We're going to get into gut biome and leaky gut and stuff like that in the future. Tocotrienols must be present. In nature, all these things, vitamin E, selenium, tocotrienols, they're all together in the vitamin E complex. In your body, vitamin K can even substitute vitamin E. Okay, How many of you knew about all these interactions? See a yes or a no in that box. Yes or no in the chat box. No, Dr. Bennett. No, Dr. Davidson. Carrie, no. Linda Thompson, no. Pat Talk, no. Jack, no. Lori Simonides, very good. Jennings, yes, okay, very good. Diane, not all. Okay. Okay, before we go on, does anybody have any questions right now about anything that we've covered? Any questions about anything that we've covered so far? Now's the time to ask. Any questions at all of anything that we've covered so far? Now's the time to ask. Okay, again, you can... Uh, you can get a replay of this. Uh, it's in the notes that I sent you on YouTube afterwards. And you can ask for any of these notes also. Okay. Yeah, her, here we are back again. Now, we're going to go to evidence-based medicine. And... Uh, how many of you actually knew before... Uh, these seminars that I'm giving on uh, on these Thursdays actually knew what exactly you hear these bandied around all the time. How you knew actually what evidence-based medicine and best practices are? Because we're being judged by this. How many of you know what they are? See a yes or a no in the box. Yes or a no in the chat box. How many of you know what evidence-based medicine and best practices are? Mario, yes, so that's good. Pat Talk, yes. Mary, uh, doc, Dr. Jennings, no. Dr. Don Donald said somewhat. Mark Bennett, not until you explained it. Okay. Basically what this is, and this is taken, this is the ACA, and it's taken out of the British Medical Journal. So basically, we're in unity with the medical profession on this. 
So you have experimental evidence, good experimental evidence, plus uh, your experience in your office. So it depends on both of those. So it's not just one or the other, it's on both of those. So what, what you have found in your office that you didn't learn from some study really counts in evidence-based medicine and best practices. And I urge you to get this so you have a copy. And again, you can you can get this, just you know, click on it and it'll be sent to you after the seminar, or you can uh, ask me to send it in an email. Okay, now we have videos available. And I finished, uh, I finished filming this part four video, which has all this and a bunch of other stuff in it. And we are now editing it, so that's gonna be available. Let's talk about the videos. Uh, parts one, two, and three are out, since you probably didn't know about it. Post-publication is $500. Since you didn't know about it, I will give it to to you if you order today or tomorrow for only 250 each for a year's viewing. If you don't, then it goes up to $500. Part four is now production. Now, what do you do? You go online at Seminars Professional under ttapcenter.com. Go to the seminar you want, one, two, three, or four. Under requested location, you type in film and your phone number. Then click down the down area by the $395 and choose $250. Okay. Now, what are they about? TTAPS Part 1. Film 1, use of myotatic reflexes to resolve pain and biomechanics, chronic neuromuscular skeletal conditions. Basically, you have no idea how much just plain reflexes with minimal scar tissue in the skin uh, can help your patients until you've taken part one. We've been kind of bamboozled into believing by ART and Graston and transverse friction massage by Dr. Syriax that everything involves dense scar tissue. You find out in part one, nothing could be further than the truth. If you haven't taken that seminar, still, people are benefiting by watching the film over and over again. We show you, for example, how to get somebody off a cane or a walker in one or two visits. Yeah, you heard that right, one or two visits. Standing up out of a wheelchair if they're not there because of paralysis in just a couple of visits. Get them walking again. Immediately restore significant range of motion Understand how reciprocal innervation can immediately help restore function in distant parts of the body. Correct foot drop in the majority of cases, just a visit or two. Cogwheel rigidity, arm of leg, or arm or leg from like stroke or cerebral palsy. We've done this on people brought into the seminars. They can't believe it. Uh, we take the arm out of this position, have it straight in a matter of seconds, Ungrasp the hand in a matter of seconds. You got a rigid leg. We have it bent just in a matter of seconds. It's amazing what you can do with reflexes. You think you've seen it all? Think again. For example, fibromyalgia pain, sciatica, and all these are proved out by normal orthopedic neurologic tests. It's not just something I'm saying. They're proved out immediate before and after. Herniated uh, or bulging disc. Unoperated rotator cuff frozen shoulder syndrome, regional pain syndrome, formerly RSD, burning tongue syndrome, burning pain in lower and upper extremities or genitals, female cyclical menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, numb hands and feet, dropped hands, roots, and cuboid arches, polyhydrosis, cranial nerve symptoms, hearing loss of differing frequency, tinnitus, foot drop, carpal uh, tunnel or thoracic outlet syndrome, provable by phalans, reverse phalans, ten, tenels, addisons, uh, cold burning hands or feet, Renaud syndrome, loss of vibration sense in the feet and toes, 
dizziness and vertigo, positive pinwheel test, bladder leakage, hyperhidrosis, MS symptoms, Parkinson's symptoms, cogwheel rigidity, okay, ALS symptoms, Guillain-Barre symptoms, and a lot more. If you haven't taken this, you're really missing out. It's very easy to take care of these and in a very short period of time. So I would urge you either to take the seminar or get the film. You will be amazed, guarantee it. Techniques are not reflexology, not AK, CRT, PNT, TBM, transverse friction massage, spinal reflex therapy, contact reflex analysis, it's none of those things, none of them. It's completely unique. It's based on known tenets of acupuncture, trigger point therapy, reflexes, and neurology found in laws and tenets in Dorland's uh, Illustrated Medical Dictionary, Chusage Neurophysiology, Guidance Textbook of Med Medical Physiology, and others as taught in all CC accredited chiropractic colleges. So these are just, these are taken directly out of uh, scientific textbooks, and we show it to you uh, directly out of those textbooks as we show you, and I show you the rationale of how I develop these things. Treatments are, and effects are verifiable by standard orthopedic and neurologic examination. I am published in JMTPT and Chiropractic Economics on techniques being taught. I'm a former ad adjunct faculty member at Postgraduate Division, Texas Chiropractic College. Film 2, Scar Tissue and Rehabilitation Seminar. Simply free up scar tissue between other tissues normally in one treatment. Okay, now in ART, right in their class, they tell you it takes four to six visits to free up a muscle. We do it normally in one treatment. And it's a lot less exertion on your part, a lot less pain to the patient also. We're talking about doing it normally in a matter of seconds, not minutes of torture and having you be totally exhausted at the end of the day, okay? We get people off canes and walkers. Now, the first four hours of this is actually a continuation of part one because we just didn't have enough uh, room to put it in. So I show you how to test over 200 muscles in easily less than 10 minutes. This is not applied kinesiology, although I'm certified in the highest level of that. And then... Touch one muscle like this, and immediately all the muscles come strong. You go back and you retest the weak muscles. I don't care whether it's three or 53. They immediately come strong. The only exception being if there's a lot of atrophy in a certain muscle. It's going to take a little longer to come along in that case. The second thing we show you is to find dermatomal pain. Palpate the whole body. Less than five minutes. Touch one spot based on the pattern that you're seeing and immediately 10 seconds go back and you palpate pain's gone the only exception being if there's a lot of inflammation okay and even that the pain has gone down by half immediately and it just takes a while for it to settle down now what this does it keeps you from uh, going through and strengthening single muscle by single muscle over a period, long number of visits. You do it in one visit. Going from trigger point to trigger point in muscles, you get rid of all those in one visit instead of having to go through over and over in the patient, okay? And causing a lot of pain. So, chronic athletic injuries, hamstrings, ankles, wrists, Golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, rotator cuff, knee, turf, toe, shin splints, chondromalacia patella, weak ankles, trick knees, plantar fasciitis, myalgia parasthetica, bronchitis and asthma, gagging, esophageal spasm, reflux esophagitis, TMJ syndrome, migraine headaches, chronic whiplash, chronic hip, knee and ankle, shoulder, elbow and wrist pain, tendonitis, bursitis, adhesive capsulitis, frozen shoulder, Dupatrans contracture, trigger finger, Osgood slaughters, chronic fever and sore throat, scar tissue and acupuncture, old fracture and chronic pain, bone, 
and sclerotomal pain, fibromyalgia, burning pain, resistant sciatica, uh, getting people off the cane and walker, herniated or bulging disc, and this is uh, something also put in there, degenerated disc, and um, spondylolisthesis. Uh, in seconds, you have people out of the pain from herniated, bulging, protruding disc, spondylolisthesis. Uh, we figured out a way to do it very quickly. Again, this is not adjusting this working with scar tissue. Rotator cuff and frozen shoulder, foot drop, hearing loss of different frequencies, tinnitus, carpal radial, uh, uh, any uh, tunnel syndrome, ulnar tunnel syndrome, thoracic outlet, small joint fibro, fibrous ankylosis, chronic shingles pain, arthritic finger and toe joints, unadhere organs from each other and stimulate circulation and lymphatic flow, diaphragmatic and accessory breathing mus muscle function. We show you how to do endonasal technique, including balloon nasoplasty. And we show you four different methods to open those up. Eustachian tube techniques for chronic sinusitis, chronic migraines, true eustachian tube deafness, Meniere syndrome, female cyclical menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, dizziness and vertigo, dropped longitudinal and transverse and cuboid arches, unexplained chest pain, MS Parkinson's ALS game barre symptoms, ankylosing spondylitis symptoms, seizures, and a lot more. Now, the second thing we teach you is how to cut the rehab time to a fourth, fourth of the time that it normally takes you, okay? And then we teach you how to quickly take care of the scar tissue, okay? So we teach three distinct things at that seminar to really speed up your results. And uh, it takes a lot less effort on your part and a lot less pain to the patient. Part three. So the first one is reflexes alone with maybe minimal scar tissue in the skin. Second part is dense scar tissue outside the joint that leaves dense scar tissue inside the joint, which is part three. Adjusting manipulation mobilization of the extremity, cranials, and vertebra. Now I've treated, and this should be, I'm sorry, over 40,000 patients from all 50 states and 97 countries. I've treated over 3,000 athletes, over 800 of which were professional athletes. I've treated 12 professional teams, three of them foreign national teams. I was the first chiropractor asked to treat NFL run for daylight and fast man competition players. Now all this, yeah, applies to athletes, but it applies to your patients too. Now, what I'm going to tell you is using part one, two, and three, I'm just going to give you, for instance, you haven't lived until you've treated a whole football team, 72, 73 players. You have to treat them all in an hour right before the game, again at halftime, and again right after the game. Okay? I had to do that. I had, had to learn to be very, very quick and efficient. Okay? That carried over into the practice. It made me very quick and very efficient in the practice. So you can get athletes, most athletes, back on the field in days, in most cases, even if they've been out for months on the disabled list. So we teach you how to treat ribs, costal cartilages, golfers, tennis elbow, chondromalacia patella, bunions, flat feet, high arches, drop transverse and cuboid arches, reliable, reliably relieve reflux esophagitis and esophageal spasm, upper GI condition, hiatal hernia. This is with an osseous adjustment. It's not the applied kinesiology where you're adjusting the stomach down. This is an osseous adjustment, takes care of reflux esophagitis and hiatal hernia. Acromial and sternoclavicular, chondritis, costochondritis, hallux rigidus, hammer and claw toes, bowed legs, knock knees, frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis, rotator cuff, carpal tulnar, uh, carpal tarsal ulnar Guyan radial tunnel syndromes, etc. Uh, we show you how to take a uh, an older person that has uh, dementia 
and within seconds their face will flush and they will start remembering people calling them by name even when they, when they haven't for years some people have been totally not talking for as long as five years they were brought into a seminar in in um, uh, Grand Rapids Michigan the guy brought his wife in and uh, Immediately after the first treatment, she started talking. She hadn't talked for years. She'd been in a wheelchair for years. Hour and a half later, I treated her again. By the way, all these treatments are of the knees. They're not cranial treatments. Yeah, you heard that right, the knees. So her face, her face flushed. She, she began talking. Second treatment, hour and a half later, she stood up, said, what am I doing in this wheelchair? I don't even understand that. She's been in a wheelchair for five years, unable to stand. She stands up, and she starts to walk. Hour and a half later, bring her back again, treat her knees again. And now she's still bent over after that second one. Then she straightens up, adjusting her knees, and is walking and talking at a normal pace to her, to her husband and her grown daughter. Explain that to me. You know, it's just mind-boggling. That happened in front of a class of 35. And it's predictable. Autistic children, cranial techniques. I've gotten autistic children speaking sentences after only single words, significant demeanor changes, even entering normal schools. And other docs have taught report youth autistic patients now multitask where they couldn't prior to treatment. So one doctor, he said, you know, I really doubted you. I had this child, five years old, and the cranial treatments I, I teach only take about three minutes, even with the prep, okay? And he said this child had never spoken a word. Right after I treated him, he turned his head and looked up at me, and he said, thank you, doctor. My mouth dropped open. His parents' mouth dropped open. It's the first words that he ever spoke. That's pretty cool. I'm the only chiropractor on the uh, 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 requested doctors list for autistic children in the state of Texas. Stop elusive migraines, improve vision, hearing, tinnitus, improve organ and gland dysfunctions, correct TMJ dysfunctions. Uh, first thing we go over about four hours in this class, we teach you how to stress the digits the joints of the digits, and you can affect almost anything throughout the whole body with that. Just to give you an example, one of the docs I'm mentoring uh, said, I, I did not believe the stuff that you were talking about. And he had two women come in with uh, cysts on the ovaries. One, he said he couldn't even stand upright. She had to sit there with her leg extended because she couldn't bend at the waist. And he did digital stressing in the way that I described. And she, all the pain went away in her pelvis. And she sat up and she stood up. Couldn't believe it. The pain was absolutely gone. And same happened with the other one, although she wasn't, uh, you know, straightened out like that. And you see all sorts of stuff like this with digital stressing of the toes and fingers. Totally unique. All the stuff that I teach is unique like this. And uh, it's just mind-boggling how quickly it works. Now, the first three seminars address the nervous system. The nervous system controls the secretory and excretory events of the body. And so people that have not responded nutritionally, when you correct these things in part one, two, and three, uh, just autocorrect because it was a neurological issue and it wasn't actually a body chemistry issue that needed any nutritional tweaking. It was a neurological uh, problem causing a body chemistry problem. So part four, part of which you know we're addressing at this, um, uh, this talk today, is on pure body chemistry. And I teach this very different. Now the first thing that I stress to everybody on every seminar that I teach is forget everything you thought you knew about anything because there's probably a better, quicker way to do it. Okay, I had to relearn a lot of things to come to the conclusions that I did. 
Um, I've taken over 100 vertebral and pelvic adjusting seminars. I've taken 37 extremity seminars, 32 cranial seminars, and un untold amounts of body chemistry. I have a Master of Sciences in Biology, emphasized in human nutrition, a Master of Biologist, and a Master of Acupuncturist, amongst other things. So, part four, body chemistry, nutrition, biochemical individuality strategies, okay? Now, I've also uh, been a member of six nutritional, medical, and scientific boards of uh, major nutrition companies. So, I'm with MDs and PhDs, biochemists, uh, helping to formulate uh, vitamin, mineral, enzyme supplements, herbal supplements for major nutrition companies. I performed over 15,000 nutritional assessments. So I teach you different things. I teach you the per procession between going in the mouth, digestion, absorption, transport through the blood, the cellular level, going into the cell, in through the envelope of the nuclear envelope and the mitochondrial envelope, the blood-brain barrier, all these things, okay? Strategies to significantly accelerate correction of, uh, for example, allergic to virtually every food, feel they can't eat anything. So you have people walk in, they've had all these tests, and they say, there's only five or six things that I'm not allergic to. I've had people come in as much as getting weekly shots, allergy shots, for 28 and a half years. We got them off the shots. People saying that um, <coughs> after the patch test and all that, they, they, that's all they can eat, five or six different things. And yet we, we find maybe two or three things that's causing them to be allergic to all the rest of them. And we help them to identify it. So uh, they don't have to be a hermit anymore. They can eat a lot, of more, a lot more things than they were told. Autoimmune disorders that really aren't. Dysmenorrhea, excess and prolonged flow. Bone mineralization issues, infection, natural antibiotics, nutritional interference antibiotics, endogenous poisons, metabolic uh, intermediates, hormone balances, in, imbalances, seizures, ulcers, bloody noses, bleeding ulcers, uh, fungal and candida conditions, fung chronic fatigue. You know, you can get somebody over uh, systemic candida in just two or three weeks. Yep, it doesn't take long. You get people out of basically every chronic fatigue uh, condition. Psycho, psychometabolic and visceral-somatic syndromes. Nutrient interdependence. How one nutrient can correct five others or more. Obesity. We show you seven or eight different things that actually cause obesity. It's the root of all of them. And we're going to have a, uh, you know, one of these dissertations just on obesity. Abnormal cell growth. Uh, we talked about cancer in two weeks ago. If you didn't see that one, uh, you know, go on YouTube and watch it and uh, request the notes. Nutritional causes and corrections. The behavior disorders, uh, hyper and hypotension, bone demineralization, depression, hyper hypothyroidism, hyper and hypoglycemia, failure to digest, absorb, and metabolize. Uh, we had one on uh, bones, bone fractures, uh, osteopenia, osteoporosis, things like that a few weeks ago. So if you didn't look at that, you know, go back and look at it. So I would suggest that uh, you get these for the pre-publication price 250 to view for a year if you don't have them as yet. Now, I also do mentoring, and now with the mentoring, one of the things that you have is you can ask me about any of these things. You got problem patients, and you say, I'm, I'm having trouble with this. Well, I can bring these things. I'm so familiar with them. I can say, okay, I, now I, I give you the notes to all the seminars, regardless of which uh, mentoring that you do. I say, okay, let's go to 
this one in this seminar, this page, this handout for this seminar, and I take you through how to help it. Uh, also show you how to work with staff. I show you how to work with associates. I show you such things as uh, like you have an average of 10 calls for an example. The average practice when somebody calls in inquiring, only seven or eight of them actually set an appointment. And of those seven or eight, only seven or eight actually show up. So now you're down to five out of the 10 calls. And out of those, only two and a half to three actually follow through. So we show you initially without even getting any more calls than you're getting, how to get nine or nine to 10 out of 10 that call up to set an appointment and to show up. And nine to 10 out of 10 to follow through. So here, without even getting any more calls, which we show you how to get a lot more calls, you don't uh, triple or quadruple your practice just with that. Now, 911, when most practices went down by 30 to 50 percent, some up to 70 percent, kind of like COVID here, mine went up 1700 percent. And I actually averaged for several years 640 new patient calls every month. You heard that right. I did not say per year, I said per month. There is no reason why I can't guide you to get where you want to go in practice, okay? Mentoring testimonials. Dr. B's mentoring program is second to none. And you can read through that. It's Dr. DeSalniers. This is in California. Dr. Bonebreak's mentorship program is the best investment I've ever made. I thought I was a good doctor before meeting Dr. Bonebreak. And this doctor is in... Cleveland, Ohio. You can read through that. Since mentorship with Dr. Bonebreak, I've seen several improvements in my practice. They get their desired results, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He his practice improves so much. He says, you know, I'm going to transplant. My wife and I are going to go down to uh, Florida. We've always wanted to live there, so we're helping him start a new practice there. He was in Chicago. He is in Florida now. I wasn't sure if I needed a mentor. So I already thought my business was very successful. I attended Dr. Bonebreak's scar tissue seminar where I witnessed immediate changes on myself, my brother, and observed other, other doctors, both subjective and objective improvements in a very short period of time. Doctors in Houston, okay? We show you how to get very quick jaw-dropping responses with everything that we show you. That makes a big, big difference in in your uh, practices. Uh, last doctor there doubled his profitability in a year. You know, you can increase your practice with a lot of whatever others do, but how much does it increase your profitability? Uh, I can show you both. How to increase your practice, number of calls coming in, number of patients you see, and your profitability. So we show you how to cut back on unnecessary expenses and etc. Now finally, what about the mentorship itself? Now I've made this so that it's uh, very reasonable for anybody. Okay, I don't want anybody to miss out on this because you all deserve to have the practice of your dreams. Okay. Uh, when I first went into practice, I did certain things. I had never been in business before. I was seeing 50 patients a day, five days a week, between two and three weeks after I first went into practice. Okay, uh, I had the largest practice in the world. Before that, I had the largest practice in the Midwest. I can show you how to do whatever you need. You know, If you put it off, don't put it off anymore. You know, Now's the best time. Like I said, right after 911, when everybody's practice is plummeting, mine went up 1,700%. How many, how many of you docs are doing that? People I'm working with, you know, they're all experiencing really good patient flow right now. A lot of them are improving, even with this COVID thing. Everyone's a good fit. The program enables you to become top, top level, rapid, efficient patient response with scientific methodology found in medical literature. 
I want you to become a nerve and biochemistry expert. Get referrals from everywhere, get paid what you're worth, low stress and family time. Others have committed and changed your life. Their lives, it's your turn. I want you to just close your eyes for a minute. A few seconds here. Imagine having the business of your dreams, everything smooth running, plenty of highly satisfied and enthusiastic patients, as many as you want or can handle, financial security, time to enjoy with your family, time to exercise regularly, and great health. You can have all that. Three reasons why preeminence mentoring can work for you. You'll, you will devote the effort, time, and dedication to get what you want. And I'm not talking about uh, making huge changes. I believe in small, deft changes to help you out. I don't want this to be difficult, okay? Charisma isn't necessary. You've been listening through all these classes I give. I stumble over my words all the time. I am very monotone. I'm not David Singer. I could never be David Singer. That guy has charisma oozing out his pores. I'm not that, nor do you have to be. My practice was many times higher than his, okay? Group or one-on-one -on -one mentoring is very affordable. Your next step, you got to commit to be superlative. So go to the link ttapcenter.com, choose the mentoring level that fits you, and commit to change your life. So what are the levels? You have a 12-month group mentoring. You have one group call per week for 12 months of an hour one hour weekly. So you got 52 one hour calls. $250 a month. Anybody can do that. One patient, just the exam, will get that for you. Or a payment, a single payment of $2,500 will save you $500. That's all it takes to get in the group mentoring. It's group interactive with podcasts just like this. People type in, you know, what what they're having trouble with. You get to observe what's going on in their practices, and they probably have a lot of the same questions that you do. You also type in. You say, okay, this is what I'm having. Everybody else wants to know your problems, and we show you how to get through them. So you have a group interaction here, and we show you how to get through those very quickly. So we answer all those questions. We want you to to step up your practice to the level that you want and desire. Up your income dramatically in accordance with your level of commitment. You have to have commitment. Get paid for what you do. How to uh, run your practice in the most efficient manner possible. Think and reason quickly. I want you to be able to listen to what the patient comes in with. Ask a few deft questions and immediately know what to do. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I want you to be a quick thinker and a quick actor. I want you to get away from taking 20 to 30 minutes to treat a patient and think more on the level of 30 seconds to a couple of minutes maximum. Getting better results than when you did 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, give talks to get lots of new patients. I gave uh, talks every week out of my office and uh, different bookstores and Whole Foods. I average 35 to 50 patients every time I talked. Usually every one of those became patients. Okay, It's not that difficult to do. I did mall shows. My average mall show without advertising got 220 uh, patients on average every time I did a mall show. Okay. It's not that difficult to do. You just need to know what to do. That's all. Don't ask patients for referrals and get scads of them. Communicate in such a way as to draw referrals to you from all over. And this is not Scientology or anything like that. I do not teach that. How to testify in court and depositions. You get the best settlements. I show you how to you got to learn how to take the opposing attorney down. I show you how to think and how to act to do that. How to write killer narrative reports in the best manner possible. Uh, attorneys that I've dealt with say that when I'm involved in a case, they get three times the settlements as when any other medical doctor or chiropractor is involved. 
situations answer that solve your own situations. Now you can step up to the one year one on one mentorship in the first three months and get those benefits as well. Commit now to get your dream practice. You know, why wait? Why put it off? This is extremely uh, cost effective. Next one is six month one on one mentoring. You get one call per week for 26 weeks. Just you and me, one on one. We talk specifically about your practice. It's a thousand a month or one payment of four thousand, saves two thousand dollars. That's pretty good savings. So one hour per week for six months, twenty six. You get all those things. You get to talk about anything like we do in the group mentorship. Mentorship, but it's just you and me, one on one. I'll cover what's on top of your radar first. What I do is I have you carry around a small notebook with you all week. Whenever you think of something, just pull it out and write it down so you don't forget it. Okay. Now I've taken 32 different practice management, consulting, and coaching uh, and you don't call those mentorships because none of them really are. Uh, my practice was far better than any of them, but I learned a little bit from something, you know, from each one of them. I basically don't do anything that any of them taught now because what this is, is it works a lot quicker. I always craved to have one-on-one -on -one with the guy giving the seminar, but you could never get it. Okay, you have that. That's what mentorship is, okay? It's one-on-one, -on -one. you get your questions answered. It's directly related to what your practice needs. If you decide to step up to the one-year mentorship in the first three months, you get all of its benefits. Commit now and achieve your dream practice. 12-month one-on-one mentoring. You get one call per week for 52 weeks. It's 1000 a month or one payment of 8000 Saves you $4,000 on the prepaid. Now, I talked about the films. Okay, three of them are out right now. Uh, the fourth one's going to be out, I'm hopeful, in three to four weeks uh, because we're uh, editing it right now. And you got to watch them over and over and over, many times you want. We made it very user friendly because we have time stamps on it. So I urge you to watch the whole thing through. And then if you can't remember something, you go to the timestamp, you click on it, and it takes you right to that section so you don't have to search for it. We've made it very, very user-friendly. And you can just walk, watch that over and over and over again until it gets ingrained in your mind. Now, we're going to have a link to your website. After I get those done, I'm going to have a link uh, to your own website. I have thousands and thousands of testimonials, not only from my patients and me talking about my patients, but from other doctors that have taken the seminars and their patients. So we're going to catalog those for part one, two, three, and four. So uh, prospective patients or established patients can go straight through and look for something in alphabetical order and see what, what you can do. You're saying, well, I can do all these things. They go, oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds too fantastic. But they go on your website and they see all these other doctors and patients that have benefited and they go, oh my gosh, maybe you can help me. So they become a new patient or your established patients, they didn't know you could help that. So they call you up and say, I didn't know you could do that. I need to come in for these things. When I put them up on my own website, just for stuff that I did, I experienced for each part 20 new patients every month and 20 re-ups from established patients that didn't know that I could treat those things. So those were worth a total of 160 new patients essentially per month when I put it up on my website. That in itself is pretty good, don't you think? Okay. So after I'm done with this film, we're going to be working on doing that too. And we're also having, uh, and that's, by the way, even if you don't get the films, that's available for $50 a month per part. So if you get all of them, $200 per month. 
and well worth it. I mean, you get scads of patients just from that. You got to learn how to handle them too. Doctor's blogs. Now, this is, I'm about to put that up for the mentorship doctors. I hadn't done it up to now. Uh, basically, doctors can talk with each other and not only about the results that you're getting and asking each other, well, what would you do for this? Uh, you also learn from each other. Every one of you have come up with things that I don't know about that may help other doctors. That's what the doctor blog is about. So those in the mentorship program get that for no charge. That is $50 a month, even if you're not in the mentorship program. Okay. And uh, you get a lot of learning in that. So you can get that with or without uh, uh, the mentorship program. That's just 50 a month for each course. Now about the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, one year mentorship, uh, all of that stuff for a whole year. Okay. Talk about anything that you want. And let's get your practice up to where you want it to go. And like I said, my interest is having you put the least input in to get the maximum results. Okay? I want you to be very utilitarian. I want you to think quickly, be knowledgeable, listen to what the patient comes in with, ask a few deaf questions, and know what to do. One, two, three, four. Very quickly how to handle your staff, same thing. How to handle associate doctors, same thing. How to write a killer narrative report, same thing. How to testify in quarter deposition, same thing. We show you how to be on your toes. Now, if you decide after taking that one year, you want to do another year, just be half the price. So thousand a month for a half year or four thousand one time and well worth the price most everybody is doing that that goes through the year now business results depend on effort and following directions I can show you what to do but you're the one that has to do it we try to make it very easy for you to do though so you have to lose excuses take consistent actions to improve if you do this sign up if you're not willing to do it don't sign up is you know you're going to waste your time and money you have you're the one that has to take the action i can show you how to do it we give the information and encouragement you take the action to improve your life okay now all that being said uh does anybody have any questions on mentorship on the films on any of the material that we went over today uh we went over a little bit and i apologize a little bit over an hour and a half. Does anybody have any questions whatsoever on anything we covered today? Now is the time, so type it in that chat box there. Anybody have any questions whatsoever? I'll give you about 30 seconds to think of questions. If nobody puts any in there, I'll, I will say good night for the night, and we will talk to you next week for the next next topic. Any questions whatsoever on anything? The films, the seminars, uh, the topic we went over tonight, the mentorship, anything whatsoever. Any questions whatsoever? Okay, going once, going twice. Okay, is T-TAPS Part 4 currently available? Okay, again, uh, I finished filming it. Uh, we're editing it, and I'm hopeful that we're going to be done editing and it will be available in three to four weeks, okay? You can still get it pre-production if you order today. And again, that's 250 Mark Bennett, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Any other questions? Now's the time to ask. Anything at all that you want to talk about? Anything at all? Going once, going twice. Now, I'm going to put my email here, drbbrk at hotmail.com. And my phone number, 469-995-9907. Okay, there's my email and my phone number. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to call me. I may not answer. I may pick up later or something, uh, send me an email or text me. 
you know, this is a cell phone. You can text me also. So don't hesitate to ask. I'm here to help you. Okay. That's why I'm giving these uh, uh, free podcasts every Thursday. I want you to succeed. And I want you to do it with the least amount of effort possible. I want you to have the practice of your dreams and get amazingly successful in treating almost anything that walks in your door. Okay? Okay, any other questions whatsoever? Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you know. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Have a really good week.